Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I'm going to be testing out a new lens. This is the Laowa 90mm f2.8 CA Dreamer Macro 2X. This lens is apochromatic APO, which is supposed to reduce or maybe even eliminate chromatic aberration. So that's going to be really interesting. This lens is available in Nikon Z, Canon R, Sony E, and L mount. So you can even get one of these for your Leica if you like. But I'm going to be testing the Sony version. It's a beautiful lens. I'm going to be testing it on my APS-C A6700. Now this is a full frame lens, so you can use it on your full frame camera as well, but it also will work fine and with even a little bit more magnification because of the crop sensor you can use it just fine on an APS-C camera and that's what I'm going to do today. The lens is all metal. I'll take the lens cap off which is plastic but it appears to be all metal. It has a has a huge, huge, beautiful, smooth focus ring. Just beautiful and then it has a really small aperture ring which is click, but they're just the finest clicks. You can barely even hear them or feel them clicking. And they stop on full stops, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and 22. I wouldn't mind if it had a click for every third of a stop, but full stops are fine. I find when I'm doing macro, I'm always either on F8 or F11, and there's a click for both of those. So, so that works just fine. It has a, a really nice feel. The zoom is internal, nothing, nothing turns on the outside. And you can see, I think I can make it where you can see this. Look at the element inside as it comes to the front during zooming. Can you see it moving around in there? This thing has a 13 bladed aperture. So I'm really excited about how beautiful the out of focus portions of the shot will be. You know, a lot of expensive lenses, uh, you know, for portraiture, you shoot them wide open most of the time. But a macro lens, even though this is a 2.8, you shoot it stop down most of the time. So having a lot of aperture blades with a perfect circle that they would make is helpful. I forgot to mention, because it's kind of an afterthought to me on a macro lens, it also has this lens hood. It comes with this lens hood. It's plastic. Looks fine on there, but this is for, this lens hood in my opinion is for situations when you're not shooting macro with this lens. If you're out in some bright light and you're doing some portraiture, which this lens can make a nice portrait. 90 millimeters at f2.8, that should make a beautiful portrait. But for macro photography, I'm not gonna have this on here. I'm gonna have a bonnet diffuser on here and a flash on the camera, and I'm gonna be getting very close to my subject. So this is the last time you'll see this in the video. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get out and, and shoot with this today and provide some examples for you. But uh, so far, I can tell you, it feels great. I started last night at home. I have a Xenia garden out in front of the house. And I uh, did my first practicing with this amazing lens there. So let's take a look at the photos from home. Here's the photographs that I made at home on our Xenia garden, a bumblebee on one of the Xenia flowers. Turned out pretty nice happy with this. I find bumblebees kind of hard to photograph. And here is one of the zinnias that hasn't quite fully bloomed yet. I love to take pictures of these beautiful flowers that we have growing out in front of our house. And here's another bumblebee. If you follow me on social media, you've probably already seen this one. I have a four by five version of this on most of my social media. And this little bug is extra tiny. I think it's a plant bug is what it's called. And it's so small. When you look at a zinnia bloom, it just looks like a bad spot on the flower. And now we're back to more bumblebees. There were a number of bumblebees on the zinnias in the zinnia garden. So I made a lot of photographs of them because that was a subject that was available to me. And I think they turned out pretty good because like I say, I think bumblebees are often hard to photograph, but I managed to get some fairly decent ones. Now this is a rogue sunflower that is growing. We didn't plant it, but it's from a sunflower seed from the bird feeder and I love the way it looks. And look at this zinnia. It is absolutely covered with really small ants all over it. 
and I made the photograph of that that I thought turned out interesting. Oh, if this ant was just turned around and its head was where its butt is, it would end up being a pretty cool photo. And here's another one of those super tiny plant bugs, just so, so small, maybe the smallest or the second smallest bug in this entire video. And today, after I made my intro video that you just saw earlier, I came here to my favorite macro garden at the trailhead for the Bay Point Loop Trail at Harrison Bay State Park. And my garden, it's, it's uh, mid-August now, which fortunately it's starting to get a little cooler, but my garden is, is kind of in rough shape. But there's still plenty of insects to photograph on it, and I've been having some fairly decent luck. Let's take a look at what I'm getting here at the trailhead for Bay Point Loop Trail. Here is a very patient Katie did. I made a number of photos of it and only shared this one. It's the best one. A lot of them were fairly good, but this one was the best. And here is a small milkweed bug. This is sitting on one of the dead blooms. Like I said, this garden's been blooming all year, but not all the blooms are dead. Here's a large milkweed bug on another one of the blooms that is nice and healthy and brand new looking. Next up, we have a red-headed bush cricket. I've only photographed two or three of these, but I really like them. They're very interesting looking. And now here is another small milkweed bug. Now this one I'm using all 2X of the lens plus the 1.5 crop to really get this small milkweed bug big. The closer you get to the subject, the more difficult it is to get the subject in focus. And that's not a fault of the lens, that's just physics. Because the closer you get, the more shallow the depth of field is but you can't stop the lens down a whole lot. I mean, you can, but then you'll run into diffraction, which kind of defeats the purpose. I've found that F8 is about the perfect spot. F11 works too, but I'm worried that I'm losing more than I'm gaining by moving to F11, so I'm shooting mostly at F8. This is a pale green assassin bug, and it looks like it has a victim that it's munching on right now, even as I make this photograph. And the garden is still going strong. There's new blooms on the way. I love to make photographs of flowers before they bloom. I think it's really beautiful. And here's another large milkweed bug. I just love the way these photos are turning out. This is on one of the older blooms. I thought it looked really beautiful. And with this lens, I've been able to get some of my very best ever small milkweed bug photographs. They're a good bit smaller than the large ones. And with this lens, I'm able to get them look pretty good. Well, now I'm at the Tennessee River Park Curtain Pole Road area, which is a great place for macro photography along this blue handrail. And the person who uh, let me know that this is a great place for macro photography is a friend of mine named Forrest, and he was here today, so that was cool, but he's doing, he's doing larger photography than macro. I'm still doing macro, so let's see what I can find here. Here's an ant on the blue rail. This is a full 2X magnification shot, and of course, the main thing to get in focus is the eye, and I got it. And this is a sycamore lace bug. What an amazing looking tiny, tiny little bug. And you can see down in there, the eyes in focus. Can you see the tiny bug in front of my fingertip? I'll show you what it looks like at 2X macro on an APS-C camera. Here's the cute little plant hopper that I showed you by my finger in the previous clip. And bokefied in the background is a red ant that was walking by when I made that shot. Here's a jumping spider, one of my favorite creatures to photograph. Not the best shot of this jumping spider, but I have some better ones a little later. Here's a spined soldier stink bug. Not that pretty to look at, but when you get them in a macro situation, you can see their red eyes, which I think are really pretty. And here is an ant that was kind enough to stop for a moment so I could make a photograph. I managed to get its eye nice and sharp. And this next creature is a woolly aphid. Just amazing, very, very tiny, probably the smallest creature in the video. And I happened to catch it as it walked along the blue rail. Here's a caterpillar of some sort. Look how long its hair is as it's walking along the blue rail. Next up, it's another ant right on the curvature of the blue rail. The top of the blue rail is to the left and the side of the blue rail is to the right hand side of the frame. Next up, it's another spine soldier stink bug. I managed to get another photograph of this one. Just beautiful. I really love the way these look. And last in this section, it's another shot of the plant hopper. Just the cutest little thing. And I really enjoy photographing these as well. 
I've seen a number of jumping spiders here on the blue rail, but I finally, as I've gone all the way down and am almost all the way back to the entrance, I finally found one that would kind of cooperate for a photo or two. This was definitely my best jumping spider photograph of the day, and this is a different one than the one that I showed you earlier in the video. There's so many species of jumping spider, and I saw several, but I only made photographs that I was happy with of the previous one and this one that I've made two photographs of to share with you. I brought the Lowell lens down here to the Evelyn Davenport Navarre teaching garden and made a few photos. Here's a cicada, and I think it's just the cicada exoskeleton, and I'm presenting it upside down because that's the way I photographed it on the trail on the way to the teaching garden. And at the teaching garden, I made a photograph of this beautiful grasshopper that I thought turned out really nice. I love all the colors of this one. And I also made a photograph of a skipper that was on one of these sunflower blooms. Just beautiful. I love skippers. They're so cute, and I really enjoy photographing them. You know, macro is hard. Anybody who tells you macro is easy is probably telling you a story. Macro is hard, and I've been having some pretty good success using focus peaking to focus with this manual focus lens. But uh, I came back over here to the blue railing at Curtin Pole Road, and I programmed one of the buttons on the camera to do focus zoom, which has helped some, especially if I have a subject that is kind enough to not move much. This is a different species of plant hopper than the previous one, but I did use focus zoom technique to get its eye nice and sharp. And next up is a red ant. These were walking around all over the place and they were moving too fast to photograph, but this one was injured. So I used the focus zoom technique to get its eye nice and sharp. This caterpillar I thought was really beautiful. It looks like it might be a Pittsburgh Steeler fan, but it was moving too much to do the focus zoom technique. So I just did focus peaking. And here is a soldier fly that sat still long enough for me to use the focus zoom technique, which turned out really nice. And next up, this is a green stink bug related to the spine soldier stink bug, but completely different in color. And that's my last macro shot of the day. I've really enjoyed shooting with this combination today. It's super light, this 90 millimeter Laowa lens and the A6700 together are not heavy at all. The Makey flash also doesn't add hardly any weight. So it makes it a lot easier to concentrate on tiny subjects that you really have to hold steady. I'm still pretty wobbly, but I do the best I can. And you know, I'm not the greatest macro photographer in the world. So if I can do it, you can probably do it with this lens and this camera as well. Overall, I'm going to highly recommend the Laowa 90mm f2.8 macro lens. And like I said earlier, it's available for Leica L and Sony E, Canon R, Nikon Z, so all the big players. So if you want to get a really cool macro lens, this might be one to think about. Now, 2x macro is really hard and it's not the fault of this lens that it's really hard, it's just hard. The more you magnify, the harder it is. So keep that in mind, don't expect miracles out of this thing. You probably, especially if you're hand holding it, you will probably, I think Michael Waddell, who is a YouTube macro photographer who I'm very fond of, I think he said he gets maybe one or two sharp out of 10. So don't feel bad if you don't get every picture sharp. That's, that's not what macro photography is all about but give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see some more. Thanks a bunch. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.